How's it going, everyone? It's Artifact. Hope you all had a wicked weekend. We're going to get back on with some sound design this week with Vital. This time, I'm not going to make a bass. I'm just going to make a little kind of vocal hook you could use, like just before drop, for example. So it's kind of like a neurofunk robot sci fi kind of voice. It's quite simple to make in Vital because you know you've got the text to speech function. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a few little extra tips on how I've sort of processed this vocal sound to get this archetype noise which is going to be the title of this track which is going to be released on my patreon in the coming weeks very very soon so definitely check that out if you want to support so i don't want to spoil too much of the track yet but that's kind of uh, this is kind of going to be the sort of lead up little uh, vocal before the drop Archetype. Archetype. Uh, the track is going to be called Archetype because I watched a really interesting interview with one of my favourite musicians and he was talking about how sampling and, you know, getting influenced by sort of other people in the past, you know, everything's kind of built on uh, archetypes and influences and it's not necessarily... Uh, such a bad thing to sort of model yourself after someone else who you admire because you're never going to actually be the same person so there's only so many unique things you can do and you know modeling your sound on something else is a great way to learn as well so anyway let's get into this patch which is simply starting off like this i've typed in the word archetype and to give it the movement of the sound, we obviously were put, tracking it to an LFO. Got a very slow one here, one half a bar. You can see it goes up. Now normally when you type in a text to speech, it seems like it's quite high pitched. So we've just pitched it down 24 semitones, so two octaves. And then just to make it more interesting, we're gonna add on a vocoder, which is gonna change the kind of character of the voice. And then I've mapped this to the LFO, so that kind of character also changes as the word is said. So that gives a bit more extra expression. Then we're simply going to add some uh, frequency modulation. So we're going to FM to uh, oscillate 2, which is going to be a sine wave. We're turning the level all the way down here and then mapping it um, with the frequency modulation here to oscillate 1. Now, as you can see, I've done it very, very low, because if you go too high on the frequency modulation, it starts to get really, really uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. And so even a little bit, you know, if I would, this is at 5% or so, if I were to take this off, you know, it's completely different, you know, just with 5%, we then get that like kind of grainy, kind of nice, dusty sound out of the vocal, which is what we're after. And another thing that we've done on this oscillator is I've actually whacked up the unison. I've slammed it all the way to 16 voices, and that's just giving it a detuned wideness, widthness, width, without it, with it. It kind of puts the um, vocal into a wide space as well because we're FMing this wide sound into it. So we get this overall wide sound without having even widened the original vocal. So that's Definitely super interesting. Then, simply, to improve this a little bit more, I've turned on a sample with white noise, we've turned the level all the way down, and then we've just ring modulated it with this second oscillator, so if we listen to those on their own, well, you can't actually hear them because, because the level's down on this one as well, and it's going into the first one. So let's listen with the first one. And without the ring modulation, so we're just introducing some natural kind of noise. Essentially this sample is multiplying with oscillator 2 and then that final result is going into oscillator 1 and all of the sound is coming out of oscillator 1. That's all you really need to know. And another cool thing I've done to sort of get the speed of the way it says archetype, you know, sort of change that kind of... Um, the, the archetype, like change up the, the speed at which each syllable is kind of reached. I've just drawn in a couple of dots here on the LFO and then I've just gone, you know, twisted them up and down. Obviously that would be too fast, so. 
So with that way, I can make sure it's like archetype. It's kind of like got a bit of, you know, kind of, gr uh, it kind of fits to the, to the tempo of the song a bit better. Just before the drop, so it's, you know, it's in time. And then, simply a few effects. Chorus, left the default settings on. And then all I've done is I've mapped it, mapped the mix to it. It's turning the mix up slightly as the sound fades out. And the same thing is happening with the reverb. There's a bit more reverb comes on towards the end, so it kind of washes the sound out at the end, just before the drop. And then most importantly, we've got some distortion with hard clipping, quite a lot of drive. And that's really just, br again, bringing out all those characters and the little details that we kind of designed originally in the patch here. All I've gone on to do after that is bounce out the sound. Very simply, we have it here in audio form, so I can see the exact waveform. I could maybe move it around a little bit, but I'm quite happy with it. And then I've made a second version for the last uh, word, which is, I think, when it says type. And then for this type, I've just applied a couple of effects from Kilo Hearts, which is sort of my go-to post-processing. And there's a link down below if you want to buy them yourself. You can save money if you use my discount code. I love the pitch shifter on it. It's probably the best sounding pitch shifter I've ever used, like outside of you know the ones you get in your software. So I've just pitched it down minus five. I like minus twelve. Like an octave down would have been cool as well, but it kind of started to distort the sample a bit too far from sounding like an actual vocal. So minus five is quite a nice kind of middle ground. And then I've gone on to also use the formant filter, which is absolutely amazing and I love it. And this just creates a different kind of uh, resonant vocal texture in the sound. And I've taken out the lows, so I've just left it on high. So we, we're not a lot sort of clashing too much with the lows of the first vocal here. So they're mixing together. So we've got a bit of a interesting kind of morphing going on towards the end, just before the drop, as we get into this potential banger. Let me know if you like the tune so far, and I'm gonna keep you updated on it, and you know, hopefully you release it in the next couple of weeks. So pretty excited about that. Yeah. So I hope that's a little helpful tip for you on how you can do some of your own quick little vocal kind of hits for like neurofunk drum and bass or anything really. Um, but yeah, big ups guys, stay safe.